What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. If you don't know me, my name is Josh. I'm the owner of Forge Product Development, a mechanical engineering consultancy, and I've been using SOLIDWORKS professionally for over a decade. A few months ago, I'm sorry it has taken me this long to make this video. A few months back, subscriber Black Mountain Fab reached out in the comments of our reverse engineering STLs video asking for help. He was getting an error when he attempted to import and align his scan data within SOLIDWORKS. We did a one-on-one -on -one tutoring session together and came up with a great solution, and that is the focus of today's video. By the end of the video, you'll be able to import open mesh files such as OBJ, 3MF, and STL and have them aligned perfectly to the base planes and coordinate system within SOLIDWORKS part and assembly files. Let's get into it. All right, so let's take a look at this. So if we go to open up a mesh file, say in this case, it's like 3MF, right? We're going to open it up and we're going to get graphics bodies, right? So the original trick would be to create the planes that we wanted within this file. And then you go and you save it as a parasolid. And under options, we would go in and we create an additional coordinate system uh, within the file. But then we would select that coordinate system here. And when we saved it as a parasolid, SolidWorks would move the model to align with the new coordinate system. So when we opened it back up in the future, it would be aligned the way that we wanted it to. Now, in this situation, the problem is that it won't let us process this mesh file as a parasolid because there's no geometry in it um, to do the parasolid conversion. So this is the error that we get, right? So there's a couple different ways to solve this problem. The first one is pretty straightforward and that's within your settings so if you when you go to open the file if you go to options you want to import as and then either one of these solid body or surface body will allow you to export as a parasolid because it's just it will have geometry in there to do the actual conversion if you're working with like a small mesh like this one um, these might be good solutions for you so all you have to do is click either solid body or surface body and when you open the part file instead of getting graphics bodies you're going to get surface imports, right? And so these, you can see that we can select these edges, we can select surfaces and planes, right? And then when we go to do our parasolid export, uh, same thing, you would go under options and select whatever coordinate system you wanted. But this will process correctly. See, we don't have an error here. So that's a pretty straightforward way of solving the problem if you have a small mesh, right? But what if you have a big mesh? What if you've scanned, like in Black Mountain Fab situation, he scanned the entire front of a truck to do a, a custom bumper design? So in that case, where you have really large files, uh, importing them as solids or as uh, surface bodies is going to probably tank your computer, right? It's just going to be so much processing power to try and convert that mesh into something that has so many faces and vertices and edges, right? It's just going to be a nightmare to work with. So we're back here in our uh, graphics body, right? We opened up the 3MF file. Um, we imported it as a graphics body. We're assuming that this mesh is so big that we couldn't possibly open it and deal with it um, as either surfaces or solid bodies, right? So this is the situation. Now, in this situation, we won't be able to select the geometry uh, directly in order to build our reference frames. Um, but that's what we're going to do first. Okay, so first we want to build a reference geometry within this part file that has our graphics body in it. And that's what we're going to use to align later on. So in this case, let's try and just make the origin down here and some planes coming off of it. So we can take a look right now at where the planes are. This front plane is probably pretty good, but right and top could be better located just for different reasons, right? And your your use case is obviously going to be unique to you and where the part opens and orients. But in this case, let's just do this. We'll make a sketch, right? And again, because this is a graphics body, we'll not, we won't be able to um, select it directly, but we can still get a very close approximation by doing something like this, right? Mm 
So now you'd only be using this as reference, right? The scan data is never going to be what you're um, pulling your direct geometry off of because the scan is going to be inaccurate anyways. Um, and so you're going to want to only use it as a reference in this situation. Like I would never, um, I would never just put a point on there and eyeball it um, and make it close enough uh, as, as part of a real product. But if you're reverse engineering everything, you're going to control the final geometry anyways, right? And so that that point is where you say it is. This simple piece of reference geometry should be good enough when we go into the next step, which is to put this part inside of an assembly. So we're going to make an assembly file with this part inside of it. So you can click the check mark and you can see that it came in and aligned the planes to the original planes. They're really small, but um, so we can click the check mark and bring this in. We we'll want to make sure that we're going to float this, right? Because if you hit that check mark, it'll come in as fixed. All right. So now what we want to do is we want to put our reference geometry on those planes, right? So we're going here, this is the top plane like this. And then we said that our front plane was pretty well aligned. So we could probably just do this. And now we are fully defined, right? So this part isn't going anywhere. But if we look at the way that it lines up within this assembly file, we have it the way that we want. In Black Mountain Fab's situation, he only wanted to get his graphics body aligned within the assembly file so that he could model on top of it, right? So what he would do then is he would go in and start making more part files and start adding his geometry based on reference of the front of his truck, right? So something like this, right? Where you have geometry that does not necessarily have a relationship to um, your mesh, uh, but you can use the mesh in designing and kind of creating visual references uh, back and forth. So if we go and look at our planes now, because of those mates that we put in, you can see that they're aligned the way that we want, right? Now, if you were to make a, another part file within this assembly, so we go new part, right, on front plane, that part is going to have the planes as defined um, off of this origin as well, right? So now in the case of Black Mountain Fab situation, we brought in his graphics body, his scan, right? We were able to orient it to the coordinate system in such a way that as he built future parts like his tubing and structures and stuff like that, their planes would be oriented the way that he wants then most efficiently. I hope this is useful to you today. Uh, if it was, please subscribe. It does a lot to help me out and help support this channel and let me know that what I'm doing is worth it. If you have any questions, reach out in the comments. If you're interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching, please feel free to reach out. I'd be happy to do that. And if you have specific problems that you think would make good future videos, reach out and maybe we'll get one of those demoed for you. Have a great week and I'll see you in the next one.